Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and today I have a visible image card to share with you. So let's jump right in. I do have a bit of a story for how this card kind of came together but I'll tell you that when we get into the coloring. So I did use a piece of masking paper and I'm just masking the bottom there because I want that to kind of be the floor and then I'm going to bring in some distress oxide ink. This is a piece of hammer mill cardstock so it is very smooth easy to blend on uh, and then I'm going to kind of create what I'm, I'm going to think of it as wallpaper. This is kind of what I thought of it as when I was creating it. So I have hickory smoke distress oxide ink here and I'm just going to blend it across the whole top of the panel. This is going to be a five by seven card. Uh, so I chose neutral colors for the background of the card because I knew that I was going to have very vibrant colors in the front. So I am going to just kind of blend this across the whole card and it doesn't need to be a perfect blend. This is the background. You're not going to see a ton of it when we're finished anyways. So I wasn't too worried about it. And then I have the visible images tea time st uh, stencil and I just sprayed one of the mica distress sprays through it. Now these sprays are no longer available. It was the Halloween color. It was empty tomb that Tim Holtz brought out for Halloween. They're not available anymore, but any spray would work for this. Any color really. You could have actually blended through the stencil as well it would have given you a slightly subtler look but you still would have created a really neat background with it this of course also adds that mica shine to it so it's very shimmery and if you guys have been with me before you know how much I love everything shiny and shimmery so I do have a tendency towards that and this card speaks to my heart with its vibrant colors so I am going to dry this because I didn't want to work on the pan or the background anymore before I actually dried it so I brought in my little heat tool and just kind of dried it until it was quite dry and then I'm going to remove the little mask that I have on the bottom and I'm going to put Put it uh, just above it so that it hide, kind of protects the hickory smoke color that we've already done. Uh, it doesn't stick really well because of course it did get a little bit wet from that spray but it still works well enough for this little bit of blending I have left. And then I did bring in vic uh, vintage photo distress oxide ink and this is kind of the floor of the shop. Uh, I did choose a brown because I'm going to make it wood textured. Uh, and I'm not a master of the wood texturing, but I do think it turned out pretty cool. Uh, so I did cover that in vintage photo. And then I am going to uh, remove the mask and kind of set that aside. Now I'm going to stamp out the images. So all of the images are from the Visible Image Alice in Wonderland stamp set. I have the coordinating dies as well. We're, we're going to bring those in in a little bit. And I did stamp out quite a few bottles. You're going to see here, I think in the end, I ended up coloring three. Uh, three of each color and I had six colors of the bottle. So uh, quite a few bottles, but I needed them to fill up the, the shelves. So I'm going to stamp Alice down and this is the same hammer mill cardstock works great for Copics as well, which is how we're going to color our images. And I am stamping in um, Memento Tuxedo Black ink. That's one of my preferred inks for uh, oxide air, sorry, <laughs> uh, Copic markers, my alcohol ink markers. So we're going to start the coloring here and I'll walk you through kind of what I'm doing and then I'll tell you my thought process. So for the shelves that you just saw me stamp out, which were in my stash from a different stamp set, um, I'm going to use kind of I'm kind of trying to create my own wood grain technique. So I'm doing this kind of quickly. All of the coloring is really sped up. I want to show it to you because I know some people like to see it, uh, but it is quite sped up because I don't want this whole video to just be me coloring because there's a lot of coloring in this video. So for the wood grain, I used E59, E79, and E29, and I did a base of the uh, lightest brown color and then I kind of just added swirls and lines and that kind of created my wood grain effect and then for the bottles I used RV06, YR07, Y06, G05, B05, V06 and then later you're going to see that I color the bottle she's holding I leave that till the end because I wasn't sure what color I wanted it to be it ends up being V79 and then to color in the little piece under the cork I also used B triple sorry, quadruple zero. Uh, and all of these supplies are linked and listed below the video description. If you're ever curious about what I'm using, and if I miss something, please ask. If you're ever curious, please leave me a comment and I will happily answer any questions that you have. Uh, so for the bottles, I just did a flat color of uh, each of the color. I didn't add any shading. There's no real anything there. I'm going to add some highlights later, but for now they're just flat color. And you can see that I've colored all of the bottles by this point, except the one that didn't stamp very well. Now for her hair, I know that Alice in Wonderland is actually blonde. However, because I already have a yellow bottle and because the bottles are really going to pop against the background, I didn't want to add more yellow. So I am going to make her, she's going to have black hair. And for me, for dimension, I like to do 
grays as my base for blacks. So for her hair, I'm going to use, I believe it's C5, C7, C9, and then I bring in um, 110, which is like special black, and I just add some extra dark shadowing with it. So, I mean, I'm no master of Copic coloring. I kind of just play with colors and hope that they're going to turn out really well. And I think that they kind of did. Uh, for her skin, I'm going to use E51, E53, and E33. I do end to a, a light skin tone because I kind of like to color everything out if it was me. So it is a lighter skin tone. And then for her dress, I use BG01, BG45, and BG49. So it is more of a teal kind of color. So it's not the exact same as the blue I've used on the bottles. Just to add some color variation there. And then for her apron and kind of shadows, I used N1, N3, and N5, which are grays. So when I was coming up to this card, I knew I really wanted to use this set. I've had this set a little bit and I've been looking at it and I really wanted to use it. And I kind of came up with this idea that what would it look like if Alice, you know, came back from Wonderland and she wanted to own her own little potion shop. Uh, and this is kind of where this whole premise came from. So I really wanted to create what I think it would be if if Alice in Wonderland decided to open her own store and she uh, really wanted to have a potion shop. Um, but of course, because it's me, everything needs to be bright, vibrant rainbow colors. So of course her bottles are rainbow colored. And I, I kind of thought about that skull and I, I, you know, one of my friends saw this and was like, oh, you know, she obviously isn't selling love potions. And I was kind of like, what if the skull was just her label? As you know how businesses, they label things and they, you know, create branding. And I was like, what if the skull was just her branding? And so the potions weren't necessarily like uh, death potions or or whatever they were designed to be originally. Um, I thought that it would just be kind of cool if they were maybe just just potions of different colors. So maybe the pink one was a love potion and, you know, one was, you know, for luck and one was, you know, it's the, so this is kind of the idea I had when I was creating this card. And, and I think it turned out pretty neat. I mean, I'd love to know what you guys think. It is obviously very vibrant, but that is my preferred color palette. I really like bright, bold, vibrant colors. They just, they make my heart happy. They make me smile. And I just, I love incorporating them into things that I create. So I do have a tendency towards very vibrant colors. So that's kind of what I was thinking when I created this card, because uh, I know that it's kind of a little bit different than some of my other cards. It's a bit more, um, dark, I guess you could consider it just because of like kind of the skulls everywhere and that kind of thing. But I love visible images, images. Uh, I love their stamp sets. I think that they create very unique, very different stamps than some of what's on the market. And I think that that really is amazing. Like I, I think that variation in your stamp sets just allows you a lot more playtime with your images. So this is kind of my take on what I think it would be if she she kind of had a life outside of the story because you never really hear what Alice does outside of going to Wonderland. So I know it's it's kind of different. It's it's a bit weird that I've kind of created a a story for my character, but I just, I kind of, I don't know, I just thought it was a really neat idea. So that is kind of the premise for this card. And you can see the background that's off to the, the top right corner there. You can see that I've added a wood grain to the bottom of the panel as well. Now that I just did with the exact same browns I used on the shelves, because I was trying to kind of mimic the same wood style, uh, but I didn't want to bring in my Copics and color the whole base of the uh, store. You could, of course, I mean, it's not a huge patch, so you could add absolutely do that. But I chose to really only uh, ink blend it and then kind of just bring in the same browns. Uh, just be aware that they do suggest you don't use your Copics over other mediums. I haven't had an issue. I do watch my nibs to make sure that they're not fraying and not having any issues. But this is just kind of what I decided to do just to add a little more of that kind of wood texture. So that is the floor, right? So she has something to stand on. There's something to kind of ground her. So I do have the matching dies for Alice and for those little shelves that came out of uh, Simus' stamp set. And I'm just going to run everything through uh, my die cutting machine here. Um, I love that the uh, vintage 
sorry, visible image uh, dies come separate. They aren't stuck together with anything, so you don't have to cut them out. They're really easy to use. And they're in black, which I just think is neat because nobody else in the market is doing that. So I just, I don't know. I really enjoy their products. I think that they have a really diverse and interesting set of stamps. And I know that there's tons more coming out, which is really exciting. So I am going to start building my scene here. And you can see that I've already kind of laid it out how I want it to go. Everything is going to be flat except Alice. I will add some a dimension to her, but otherwise I pretty much adhere everything down flat. And I did originally stamp out five shelves, but I felt like it made more sense for the top shelf to be the long shelf and the little shelf. So there's just this one long shelf behind her. And I thought that was kind of neat. And then I kind of just lined up all the bottles, how I thought it would look interesting. You could, of course, bring in more, make it fuller. I kind of have some falling over and some tipping and some laying kind of almost all the way down. This is just to add more interest because the bottles are the same size. So uh, to add a little bit of extra interest there, I just kind of have them, you know, some are tipping over. And anything that's going to end up outside of this card panel, this is the full five by seven card as well. It's going to cover the whole front of my card base when we get to adhering it but uh, anything that's hanging outside of that I will trim off in the end this is just so that I can see it I also I like how it looks when things kind of go outside of the scene it kind of gives you more vis visual interest I'm a little st struggling with words today guys uh, it gives you a little more visual interest uh, because then it's like there's something going on outside of it there's more going on in her store than just what you can see which I think re looks really neat so I mean with this if you didn't like the white border you could of course have fussy cut these um, I have the die and I like white borders I just reminds me of stickers and I like that look so I enjoy using them that way but of course if you don't you absolutely absolutely could fussy cut these out. I would have taken a little while, but you could have absolutely done that. But for the shelf that I'm going to adhere together, I did cut off the white border on the piece that I'm going to adhere over so that it wasn't super obvious that I had adhered the two pieces together, right? So then it can kind of look like it's just one long piece. Now, granted, I mean, you guys know that I've adhered these two pieces together, but this just kind of makes it look less like I've done that because you don't have that white border separating that piece. And that was super easy to cut off. And I do kind of have them all sitting almost on top of each other. Like there isn't a ton of room for me to add uh, a lot of space between the shelves but that just makes her store look like it's fuller like it's brand new she's just kind of opening it's just brand new for her so that's just kind of what I was thinking with that but I do adhere all of the bottles down flat and then in a little bit we will bring in a highlight and some glitter to make them pop even more uh, just because you know why not <laughs> honestly and every time you see me re reaching upwards it's just because I'm changing the video on my iPad I like to watch other people create while I'm creating it's kind of it just is even more inspiring so I have a tendency towards that so I did cover the back of Alice in thin 3D foam squares just to give her a little dimension but so she would still fit perfectly in an envelope and then I kind of line her up where she's standing on the floor but she's also kind of in front of that one shelf just again to create some interest and this is where I bring in my Spectrum Noir glitter pen and I'm going to add glitters on all the things because again it's me <laughs> and I like things that are shiny so I do add glitter to her dress her eyes and a, the bow on top of her head and then I add it to all of the bottles do be a aware that um, Memento Tuxedo Black Ink is not uh, water resistant. Uh, so it will try to shift if you go over a black line for too long. So you can kind of see that I do touch the back black line in the bottom of the bottle, but I don't stay there very long because I don't want it to shift or smudge. Um, and then just be aware that it might transfer some color to the tip of your marker, or in this case, the brush marker. And then for this step, I wanted to color in that bottle she's holding. So this is where I bring in the B. Uh, 79 color and it is a very dark purpley blue color and this is honestly just because blue has already kind of become a more dominant color in the, the palette of this so it just it works with her and then she's holding it there it's kind of hard to see against her and her dark hair but it is there and it does look pretty cute and you'll see it when I hold it up here in a second and then I did need to bring in my white gel pen just to add some highlights. I think that this is really, in the end, what makes images pop. Um, I love how they look, but I think the white highlight just adds a little more 
life to an image, if that makes sense. That uh, just splash of really bright white color just kind of finishes off an image for me and I love how it looks. So there's no real rhyme or reason as to where I'm adding the highlights. On the bottles, I pretty much added them all to the same place just because that was probably the simplest. And then I did add a whole bunch to her hair to kind of give it that shiny look so that it would look like there was quite a bit of different depth and dimension to it. And then of course I am going to adhere everything down to the panel or sorry, to the base there. And I just use the same um, Barely Art glue that I use for everything. I chose that one because of its super fine tip and because we have a bunch of smaller images that we needed to adhere to the, the base there. And so I adhered that flat down and then here you're gonna see I'm gonna bring in my shears and I am going to cut off anything that's sitting outside of the card. And I think that that just gives it a really finished look because you'll see here once I'm done and I flip it over, it kind of gives you that finished look, like nothing's hanging off now, nothing's outside of the frame so you'll still fit perfectly in an envelope but it kind of gives you that idea that maybe something's happening outside of the image which I think is really neat so I'm going to hold it up here so you can check it out in all its shiny glory I would love to know what you guys think of this card I'd love if you'd consider subscribing leave me a like leave me a comment and I will see you guys again very soon bye bye for now guys